If you've been on YouTube for the last couple of years, you may have seen some of the videos from famous YouTubers claiming to have sent something to space. This is space, and this is an egg, moments before I attempted the world's highest egg drop. This is the brand new iPhone 13, and we're gonna be the first people ever to launch it into space. I sent this turkey all the way up to space. I'm gonna send this slice of pizza to space. But I'm here to tell you, they're lying. Before we can assess the truth behind whether these YouTubers were actually able to send these items to space, we first have to understand, where exactly is space? Let's start at the very beginning. Way back in the 1900s, when people were trying to figure out where exactly space was, there was a famous aerospace engineer who actually did a bit of a calculation. His name was Theodore von Karman. Something very familiar about all this. So Theodore von Karman actually noticed an interesting phenomenon about how planes fly. Basically, the higher in altitude that you go, the faster you have to fly in order to maintain level flight. So if you're pretty low to the ground, you don't have to go so fast. But as you go higher, you have to fly faster and faster because of course the air density is decreasing, so you need to hit more air in order to stay in the air. So as you go higher and higher, your plane has to fly faster and faster in order to stay flying. Well, it turns out there's a special place in the atmosphere where you have to fly so fast in order to maintain lift for your aircraft that essentially you're flying at orbital speed. And at that point, you're no longer really an aircraft. You've actually kind of become a spacecraft. Oh yeah, it's all coming together. And it turns out that Von Karman did his formula to figure out where exactly this boundary occurred. And it is actually at 84 kilometers in altitude. So essentially, Von Karman calculated the height of space to be 84 kilometers. Well, plane technology has gotten a little bit better over the years and we have a general accepted boundary of 100 kilometers these days, which is considered to be the Karman line, named after von Karman, and this is the accepted boundary for space. Okay. So, the big question on all our minds is, are these YouTubers really going to space? This is where the fun begins. Well, let's examine the flight profiles and the technology that they're using. Most of these YouTubers that are sending things to space are doing so via weather balloons. So basically, you start on the ground, you fill up a big weather balloon full of hydrogen, you attach a little tiny payload, the balloon goes up in the atmosphere, and essentially, as it goes up, the balloon gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and it gets so big at some point that the material that's holding the balloon in can no longer hold the hydrogen in, and essentially the balloon will just pop, all the air will come out, and then your package will start falling. And essentially that's your trip upwards and downwards. So how high are these weather balloons flying that these YouTubers are using? Well, the highest recorded altitude for a weather balloon is about 37 kilometers. And you'll notice that that is distinctly not above the Von Karman line, which is somewhere at 100 kilometers. Not only is that not above the Karman line, it is like not even halfway to the Karman line. So these videos that are claiming that, oh, we're getting all the way to space. It's false. It's totally made up. Pure fiction. And it's worse than that, because that's like top of the line technology hydrogen balloon. A lot of these attempts that are actually being done are not even getting up to these 37 kilometers. Oftentimes they don't even cross 30 kilometers. And sometimes, if they're sending like a big package, the altitudes can be even a lot lower than that. Now, of course, it wouldn't be much of a space attempt if these YouTubers didn't take a camera along with them. And, of course, as we all know, if you go into space, you can see the curvature of the Earth. And in a lot of these videos that these YouTubers do, they show the video from their camera, and it looks like, oh man, look at that beautiful curvature of the Earth. They must be in space. Lies! Deceptions! Every day, more lies. Well, it turns out this is also a bit of a deception because the cameras that are being used on these weather balloon attempts are not actually a camera that would show you the reality of what's going on. A lot of cameras, even the ones that I'm using today, have a phenomenon where instead of showing a picture as it truly is, like for instance, let's say this is a straight box, the camera won't necessarily show a straight box. Instead, it actually will show something that looks a little bit more like this.
And the reason for this is because of the warping of the lens. And this happens obviously a lot more when you have something like a fisheye lens. And this is exactly what these YouTubers are using. Stop it, get some help. When they're looking at a straight line, like for instance, the horizon, uh, the camera lens will actually show a curved line, which makes it look like you have this big curvature of the earth. Well, in reality, if you're only 30 kilometers in altitude, the curvature of the earth that you would see is actually pretty marginal. Oh no, God! No, God, please, no, no, no! And you're probably already pretty aware of this because, I mean, you go on flights and commercial aircraft fly at, you know, 10 to 12 kilometers in altitude. And you're looking out the window. Do you see any curvature of the earth? I mean, you'd have to be pretty hawk-eyed to catch the curvature of the Earth at just 10 kilometers altitude. And these weather balloons aren't going much higher, so... That beautiful curve that you see... Not this time. We created it. It's an urban legend that never happened. Now you might be thinking, Josiah, why do you care so much about whether these YouTubers are going to space or not? Loosen your corset, have a drink. Well, the reason why I care is because it detracts a little bit from the magnitude of the engineering that's actually required in order to reach 100 kilometers of altitude. These YouTubers make it look like it's so easy to get to space. Like, all you need is a weather balloon, and you just have to have kind of a gondola, and away you go, you can get something into space. But the reality is far more challenging. That's not ridiculous. That's not ridiculous to say that. There are actually only a handful of amateurs who have actually ever managed to put anything into space, and I can list them on my hand. The first civilian team to do it was CSXT with their Go Fast rocket. The next group to do it was, once again, CSXT, Again, with their Go Fast rocket. There was also a student group called USCRPL, and they launched a rocket called Traveler 4. As far as I'm aware, there are no other civilian entities that have actually managed to put anything legitimately into space. Everything else has been a commercial corporation or a government organization. Considering this rather short list of actual common line crossing achievements, I would say that uh, the magnitude of the engineering involved is quite significantly more than what is being portrayed by a lot of these YouTubers. We want to give credit where credit's due. Of course, I have a little bit of a personal bias because we at Astra are also trying to get something into space. So if we do manage to achieve the feat, I would rather be more in the ranks of these groups rather than in the ranks of the YouTubers that claim they've been to space. I hope you learned a little bit with us today. And if you're looking for more content about the engineering that actually is required in order to get to the Carmen line, be sure to check out our channel. We're trying to document every single step that we're taking in order to build our Carmen Line Crossing vehicle. So stay tuned with our progress. And remember, to expand your horizons. I wanna be the best in the game, invest in my name. Check no restraints, I'm obsessed with the pain. I ingest, I retain, assess and I change. Possessed by the thought I'll be free one day from society's restraints, money, clouds.